The cash ban is dead. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your shine of coffee and celebrate, because the cash ban is dead. It ain't coming back, they're not going to dig it up next year, it's dead. And people have started to celebrate. Malcolm Roberts from One Nation has shared this bill, or this uh, image, meme. The cash ban bill has been binned, thanks to One Nation and to you. Now, there have been a lot of people that have been raising awareness about this, and one of the most exciting things about this cash ban bill, and I would say the most beneficial, is that some people have actually engaged in politics for the first time in their life. First time, they've, they've made a ruckus, made themselves heard, and now there's been a positive outcome for it. Hopefully, this is going to be more and more people getting activated and encouraged to participate in the political system. That is the, that's the, the takeaway from this. So I thought, let's have a look at the momentous occasion in Parliament, I'm just making sure the audio is turned on, when this cash ban was pretty much shelved. And we just have to bet. Thank you. This is a little snippet beforehand. You know, I had, to, I had to troll through to find it. Thank you, Senator Abetz. You've done this before, Senator Abetz. Ah, well done. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask that general business notice of motion number 899 be taken as a formal motion. Is there any objection to this motion being taken as formal? There being none, Senator Roberts. I move the motion. Question is, that motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Can we move Senator Lambie to your matter number nine? So there you go, guys. There's the moment the cash ban bill has essentially been binned. And if we have a look at the Hansard here, we can see Senator Roberts for Queensland at 12.04. I move that the government business order of the day relating to the currency restrictions of the use of cash bill 2019 be discharged from the notice paper. <laughs> there you have it. So it's been discharged. You, you didn't hear anyone say nay, did you? They didn't need to have a division. It was nothing exciting uh, compared to just in the House of Reps. How many people voted that in and didn't even realize? So it's a clear message has been sent to our politicians that if you push this through, you'll pay. And that's the benefit of this. So One Nation has released a press release. Let's go through this. So One Nation... Senator Malcolm Roberts' motion to bin the cash ban bill received triumphant support in the Senate today. The currency restrictions on the use of cash bill would have banned the use of cash for transactions over $10,000 and put in place hefty fines and jail terms for breaches. Senator Roberts said, This is a fantastic win for all Australians, particularly rural and elderly Australians, where the use of cash is still prevalent. Even the government's own committee inquiry said that the bill was out of step with Australian values and was totally impractical. Senator Malcolm Roberts has been persistently vocal in the fight against this bill since August 2019. This bill was never about tracking or tackling crime or money laundering and instead criminalized the use of legal tender and cash for everyday Australians. Australians now retain the right and freedom to use cash with the bill now officially dead, added Senator Roberts. I mean, this is the thing. When you, when we looked into this, <laughs> just the, the, the basis that, the basis behind all of the claims that were made to justify this cash ban bill was a bunch of town hall meetings and anecdotal evidence. It's just ludicrous. For anyone who's actually done any rigorous academic work to see something like that used as the basis to take away our freedoms across the whole country is frankly terrifying. But, I mean, how much of this stuff just slips through that we don't know, no one cares about, no one, you know, is interested? Because here in Australia, we generally are pretty pretty apathetic politically. You know, we, we don't care about our politicians. They're not, we're not as, as passionate as other parts of the world. You you know, most Australians think, you know, if they just they just stay over there, do their, do their waste their time, play around and piss away money, I can live my life peacefully. But I think more and more people are starting to realize with stupid motions like, banning cash that that's becoming less and less possible we need to get more people politically active more people excited that they they can actually have an influence on what our polit politicians are doing because it's not often it's just the people who make the most noise 
And it's, you know, this is why you've got the crazy lefties and the activists there that, you know, you wouldn't even want to want to be seen in public with most of them. They know the smelly and, and, and dirty looking disheveled people actually wielding political power because they're making enough noise. This is why you get stupid things like here in Queensland, you can't even use a plastic bag anymore because some two-seater green supporter who, when they go to an event, need three, two, two to three chairs pushed together to prop them up is voting for this fascistic stuff. But <laughs> nevertheless, you need to be... It's, it's good. It's good and encouraging. One Nation received a groundswell of support from a wide range of Australian communities for whom the use of cash is cultural. Senator Roberts said, I would like to thank the many groups who organized community campaigns against the cash bill, including the Citizens Party, John Adams, the Martin North Show. Heiser said, oh, hey, Heiser said it's got a, got a mention in that nice. Nuggets News, Taxpayers Alliance, Bank Reform Now, and the Bitcoin community. While the cash transactions over $10,000 must still be reported to Oztrack, I'm told it's, you know, even five grand. It is timely... It is a timely, uh, timely to, rem what? Timely to remind retailers with Christmas on the horizon that cash is legal tender and ought to be accepted from customers. One nation's resolve and persistence to stand in defending the rights of everyday Australians has won the day. I mean, I can understand why businesses do not want to accept cash. I can completely understand it. Why you don't want the risk of someone dipping their fingers in the till. So you know what you do? You give people a discount when they take that risk for you that that's how you do it it's that simple but i mean there you go good they got it through it's been binned so let's have a look at how it's being reported in the age and this was sent to me by a viewer so let's go through this one so plan for the ten thousand dollar cash ban dead dead and dead fantastic a plan to ban cash payments of ten thousand dollars or more that threatened to split the liberal party has been dumped with the move now dead, dead, and dead. But remember, everyone, just remember that House of Reps, when we had a look, we, we were watching it. I did a live stream where we watched the footage, uh, you know, because I'll set up my computer here and just record the the um, Parliament. And, and often or not, when I'm watching Parliament, I'll need to drink some rum when we're doing a long live stream. But they were giving good speeches, and the room was empty. There was no one there listening, and they still voted for it. So this is why having the upper house is a good thing. This is why Queensland, here in Queensland, we need an upper house. As much as I, I hate to say it, we need another house in government. We need to get that upper house back. Labor destroyed it back in the day. We need to bring it back. The problem is none of the major parties, once they have power, are going to implement it. Maybe that could be a point of difference for Liberal. They've gotten decimated so many times here in Queensland. That could be a point of difference. You know, bring in a Senate so there's oversight, so there's representation everywhere. You know, in a motion moved by One Nation, the Senate on Thursday officially dumped debate on the proposal that emerged from the government's own Black Economy Task Force in 2017 as a way to crack down on organized crimes and those seeking to avoid tax. Well, just reduce a tax, okay? There you go. Then you won't have to, you know, carry around bags. Of, I mean, okay, come on. <laughs> why are they even worried about it there's so many legitimate ways people avoid tax that have you know tremendous implications for the economy like you know negative gearing pumping up causing the housing bubble but we don't worry about that do we under the proposal businesses would face a jail terms of up to two years and fines of up to twenty five thousand two hundred per offense i mean that's just insane if they made or accepted cash payments of greater than ten thousand dollars and they were they were saying that you know we're just going to be compliant Australians are just going to comply because there's no way to police this. You know what it'll be. It'll be someone dobbing each other in. It'll be a Karen reporting you to the, to the, to the police, the federal police. The laws were supported, uh, sorry, were supposed to start this year, but have been delayed in part due to anger within the general Liberal, Liberal Party membership at the move. Despite a series of amendments to the proposal, the government faced the prospect of Liberal senators rejecting the legislation in the upper house. Assistant Treasurer Michael Sucker said the government had recognized the impact of the pandemic on the operations of small business and the broader community. As we progress through to the recovery stage, we recognize now is not the time to impose an additional burden on small business, he said. Oh, sure, mate. Sure, that's, that's the reason. It's all about, 
I love it how they frame it. I mean, this is it's politics, of course. They've got to frame it in such a way that we're doing this to be nice to you, to not put another burden on you. When all that government loves doing is putting burdens on people. Try starting a business in Australia, guys, and you'll know what the burdens are. The government is implementing a number of measures to tackle serious organised crime, as well as increasing the resources of the Serious and Organised Crime Program. A cross-agency program of work uh, comprising the ATO, Commonwealth, State and Territory Policing, and other law enforcement agencies working to disrupt serious organised crime in Australia. One senior Liberal MP said the laws were now dead, dead and dead, with no appetite within the government to re-prosecute their introduction. The Black Economy Task Force, which made the original recommendation of a $10,000 cash limit, found that the restrictions would go a long way to preventing the deliberate avoidance of GST and other taxes. Making the payments in cash makes it easier for businesses to underreport income and to offer consumers discounts for transactions that reflect avoided obligations, gaining a comp- that See, this is all anecdotal. This is what they're saying here is anecdotal evidence. They, they did a bunch of roadshows. There were less people turning up at those roadshows than went to the Senate hearings, or that actually submitted complaints. And it's anecdotal. Now it's being presented here at fact. They should say, the Black Economy Task Force found anecdotal evidence based on hearsay. But no one's going to look into that. The limit will also help to change social norms which legitimize participation in the black economy. Just reduce our taxes, guys. Okay, come on. Just reduce the bloody burden on Australians and you won't have to. Maybe you'll get some innovation in our country rather than just, you know, advanced methods of, pay, you know, doing cashies. I mean, come on. I don't think cashies are the biggest problem in Australia. You know, a subby giving someone 10% off or something on a, on a toilet declogging. Oh, no. Or someone doing a haircut. But they're going to spend the money away anyway. Within the Liberal Party grassroots, however, there were fears about limiting a legitimate form of payment. Businesses from the funeral parlor sector to online second-hand goods retailers also raised concerns. Since the advent of the pandemic, the use of cash for payments has declined sharply as retailers move to tap-and-go technology. Withdrawals from ATMs have also fallen. But there has been a surge in the number of $5,100 notes in circulation between January and the end of November. The value of $100 notes in circulation has climbed 15%, while $50 notes has climbed, jumped by 23%. Yes, because some people should always have a stash of cash at home. Remember what happened with the bushfires when people didn't have money, they just robbed stuff. And I know, I mean, there's talk as well of using contact tracing on your, your cards and things to find people to track. I'm Honestly, I'm not surprised it wasn't just done straight away. What will they find with me? They'll find like, you know, how often I get 7-Eleven coffees. <laughs> That's the problem with that. With using using the, the cards. And there's there's fees associated with tap and go too, I understand. You know, they, they, someone will charge you a, a fee even if you use tap and go as opposed to using your card another way. When sometimes, frankly, cash is faster for small payments. So there we have it, everyone. One Nation is celebrating, rightfully so, the bidding or death of this cash transaction ban. I am encouraged by the number of people that have become politically activated because of this. Hopefully, it, it, you, you'll start to get see a groundswell of people that are encouraged, and we can shift the Overton window to a more sensible position. It's not going to happen fast. It's not going to be instant. It's something that requires pain, patience and perseverance, but I can see it happening here in Australia. I was talking to, to John Adams this morning. He rang up and, and let me know that it was, it was actually uh, dead. It was destroyed, you know kicked out because I, I haven't been keeping up today if you've seen my community tabs I've had a uh, an expensive piece of equipment break so that was me sorting things out all morning and he's saying as well this is like the first time that that you know social media here in Australia have actually influenced a political outcome maybe it's the first time they've influ- influenced it for the correct side of politics what do you reckon Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Have, has this been your first you know, first time getting involved in politics? Are you encouraged by this outcome? And what do you think should happen next? As always, if you're a fan of the channel and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. And don't forget... Aussie Broadband as well if you want to get a a $50 credit to you and to me. It always helps. Take care, guys. 
Have a great day, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.